All right, welcome back everybody. Today we are in the final video of our series of um, authentication with AWS Cognito and Go. Let's jump right in. Today we're going to be talking about verifying our tokens. So previously we've talked about creating the user pool, um, setting up our IAM role so we can actually talk to and access that user pool. Uh, we talked about signing up new users, uh, verifying users, and then signing in to get back a JWT. Today we're on the last stage, which is verifying uh, tokens that come through our API. Um, so with this little piece of logic, you'll be able to create some middleware that can intercept any incoming requests or just have like a verify endpoint um, that your front end can hit. So um, we're in the Cognito documentation here and they have this little guide about how to verify uh, tokens. So there's three steps. Um, kind of the first step is confirming the structure. So uh, JWTs have a header, payload, and a signature structure. Um, and you can see that, for example, in JWT.io. So the red portion here is header. Um, what is this? Payload. Yeah, payload as uh, the purple section here. And then finally, that last blue section is the signature. So that's the structure of a JWT. Um, and we'll need to verify that. Any decent uh, JWT library will just verify that, that structure automatically for you. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, in depth. Second step, we need to validate the signature. So we need to make sure that token was signed um, was signed with uh, our specific user pool. So we're, that'll be decoding it. And then you'll finally compare the key ID, the KID, um, and that needs to match our, um, our user pool. Basically, that needs to match the public key for our user pool. Um, yep. So right here, you'll use the public key to verify the signature um, and basically make sure the key ID uh, matches our public key. And again, we'll get that for free. We'll get this parsing step here for free um, with the library that we use. The third step is verifying the claims. So once you've uh, verified the structure of your JWT um, and you've parsed and decoded it, um, you know it's signed with the right public key. Um, then you can verify things like the audience, right? So that should match our app client ID. Um, you can verify that it would that it was issued by our specific pool, so it's it's not somebody else's pool. Uh, the region as well. Um, you can verify this with things inside of it, and then finally, um, you can check the token use claim. So remember in the previous video, we talked about how there's a difference between the ID, uh, the ID token, and the access token. So the access token has a very minimal set of information about the user. Um, the ID token has a lot of more detail about users. So any of those custom um, custom attributes you create in here will show up in the ID token, um, but they will not show up in the access token. So just you know, depending on whatever your API needs, maybe you want to be a little bit more cautious um, sending and logging user information, then you probably go with the access token. Uh, maybe you need the username or you need the user's address from their token or something like that. So then you would use the ID token and then maybe you just don't care um, and you just don't even need to validate that. So this stage here, we won't really cover this step three um, today. If you want to um, be a little bit more in depth and verify specific things, you can. Um, that should be straightforward. Once you parse and decoded your JWT, you'll have access to all of the claims within the token and it's super easy just to test if they match. Um, yep, so let's hop right in. Um, so let's see, how do we decode and verify the signature of a JWT? So this, this goes a little bit more in depth about steps one and two. Um, I'll post the link to this in the video, but the most important thing is where did we get our public key, right? Cause this key ID, we need to make sure it's from, uh, matches our public key. So where do we get this? There is a little format here. Um, when you create a user pool, uh, you get this URL provisioned and this has your public key. Um, attached for the user pool. So this is the format here. You replace it with your region and your specific user pool ID. Um, so let's copy this and let's hop into the code now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here, um, we'll add a new endpoint. So r.post and we'll say slash verify and we'll make a verify token. Um, we'll need to make that function. So func verify token and what does this take? Response writer and a request. Response writer and our HTTP request. Okay. And at the end here, we're just going to return. So if we've successfully parsed the token, 
we're just going to return, and this uh, automatically returns 200 for us. All right, so public key here. Um, this is a string here. All right, so you can um, set this up. We don't have this. Um, let's see. Take a look at our environment variables here. Uh, default region. Yeah, so we do have that. Cool. All right. Um, so we'll do a string format there and also a string format there. So we're going to format these in. And next step, let's get our client from the context. Um, because we'll need the, the user pool ID here, right? Um, yeah, we'll need that pool ID. And let's format it. So format sprint f. And let's format in this. This is going to be the access. Uh, sorry, this is going to be the region. And then this will be our uh, user pool ID. Okay. And what is this key? This is called default region. All right. So that is formatted. Okay. So now we have that formatted URL here. And just to show you kind of what that looks like, that returns this response here. Um, and this has your public keys, essentially. Um, and you'll verify that the token has this key ID. And that's how you know um, that it's it's uh, signed and generated from our user pool. Okay, so now let's get a library here that we're gonna use to parse this stuff. Um, we're gonna use this one here, let's start go. Uh, this is very recently maintained, uh, good usage. Um, and it's a pretty, pretty good library here. So, they have a built-in function here to retrieve keys. Um, JWK. Sorry, we want examples here. They have built-in functionality to fetch um, a key set from a URL here. So for example, this right here. Uh, so we'll use this. And let's go ahead and pull down this library too. So let's do go get JWX. All right, make sure it's in. Yep, cool. So now we can take uh, this code here and let's fetch our key. So we imported it and we can use that the, the request context just in case they cancel that request. All right, and formatted URL. Key set. All right, and if we do get this error here, um, we're gonna do our HTTP error instead. And we will return back the error. All right, so we have our key now. Um, we have our public key. So now let's parse the token. So what this request is gonna look like, um, this is a get request. It's gonna have a header here, right? And that header is, uh, it's gonna look like auth, and then bear and then the token. So that's the header. Uh, we're going to pull from the authorization header and then we need to split this string that comes in and we just need to get the second half. Okay. Um, so actually we can do that up at the top here. Um, that would be a better spot to do it, right? You can verify that the request has that auth header. So let's get it um, auth header R dot header and then get and then auth authorization. So that returns just a string. And then we want to split that. So we can say split auth header um, strings dot split. We're going to split the auth, sorry, the auth header. And our separator is going to be space. So we're splitting this string here. And we need to make sure. Once we split it, the link should be two, right? We should get back two strings. And if that doesn't match up, we want to throw an error. Right? We want to return an error here. So let's just take this. And we're going to say if length of split off header does not equal two, um, that's a bad token, right? Missing or invalid um, authorization. And then bad request. And we return. All right. So now we've got our off header, um, we've got our key set. So now we need to parse, uh, we need to parse that token. So let's hop back in. Um, let's look for the JWT examples here. 
Uh, this is a long example, but all we really need is this. Um, so this takes in the token that we parsed from our header, um, and this takes a key set, which we got from our public. Uh, we did that jwk.fetch to get the key set back. Um, so this takes it here. Uh, let's go ahead and copy this over. Bring this down, jwt.parse, and this needs to be, what was it, split off header one. And what is it saying? It needs to be bytes, so let's convert that to bytes. All right, so this is split off header one. So this is this little token portion of it. That's what we're looking for. And we need key set here. All right, and really quickly, let's look in here. There's one more piece that we want. You can read all, all through this, but one of the things here, so if you want to also assert the validity of the JWT itself, like expiration, right? Because these tokens have issued at, they have expires at, et cetera, um, use the validate function on the return token or pass in with validate true into the options. So you see here, it takes parse option here, um, and there's a variety of these you can use, but the one that we want to make sure we use is this with validate, uh, with validate true. That will make sure that this token isn't expired. So let's pass that in with validate true. All right, so that'll make sure we're not expired. And if there's an error here, um, there was some error parsing that token or validating that token. So this would be bad requests. All right, otherwise we have our token. So let's print out that token. Um, let's say token and let's see what we have. Okay, so let's double check. So we're getting the auth header. We're making sure they pass in an auth header. Um, here's a little public key. I'm just gonna bring this down here. Makes a little bit more sense there. Um, we're getting that client from the context, our cognito client, so that we can get the user pool ID. We're building our formatted uh, URL with the region and our pool ID. Uh, we're fetching the key set with JWK. We're parsing the token, checking for errors, and then we're just gonna print the token out and let's see what we have. Finally, we'll just return that 200. So let's build it, Docker compose up. And we can sign in. Um, this is the information we've, we've used through the last video. I believe that user still exists. Um, Go ahead and sign in here. I'm going to add really quickly here. Um, just so we know, because we don't know when the server started. So let's see. All right. Uh, we want to sign in. OK, so we signed in with dev2 and we see refresh token, ID token, access token. So let's use the ID token here. Copy that over. And the request we're gonna make is curl localhost 8080 slash verify. We'll give it V so we can see the response. And then authorization, bearer. So we need that bearer. That's that's the typical format you'll see, uh, you'll see with authorization tokens. Let's paste in our token here. All right, and let's do JQ. Let's run it. Uh, whoops, that's not good. So that would be Q, end quote. So there's the authorization header, and let's do JQ. All right. So that said, method not allowed. Let's take a look here. Yep, so we missed that. So git. Let me just restart. All right, so we're back. Uh, we started up our server, and let's just rerun that. Okay. 200 back, and we see... Here's our token, our token got logged here, and inside of it, we can see all of our attributes, all the claims in the token. So here's our username claim. It has a cognito username, so that's that's the key. And let's, uh, let's get that username out. So for example, if you wanna put the username into the request context or something like that, you can actually get it out. So username, and you can just say token.get. So this is what you can do, and you pass in whatever claim you want. And what does this return? It returns the value, that interface, and it also returns a Boolean for like uh, if it was found. Uh, we don't care about that. So you can check to see if username was present, if the claim was present in your token here. And let's print that. The username, the new line, and the username. 
Cool. Um, yeah, let's restart this. All right, and we've started up the server. Let's run our quest again. And now you see the username is dev2, and here's the token. Um, yeah, so that's how you can do it. Um, one thing, just an improvement here. So every time you're hitting the verify token endpoint, we're making a request here. When we call jwk.fetch, we're making one request to this endpoint here. There's a better way to do it. And what is it? JWK dot um, auto refresh. So you can set up a auto refresh and um, read the documentation on this. But what this does is it periodically um, refreshes your uh, your public key. So it periodically refreshes. You specify. Um, you can specify the reset timer, right? You can specify the length, the amount of time it takes to refresh and get that back. If you want to see how to implement that, uh, I think they have it in their examples. Uh, JWK auto refer. Yep. So if you want to implement this, this is a better way of doing it. Um, we're just doing a really simple version for the video. Uh, take a look at their examples and follow this through. Um, what else? Yeah, so this is how you get the claims. Um, remember, if you wanted to go a little bit more in depth and verify things like the issuer, the audience, um, what kind of token it is, if it's an access token or an ID token, um, this is the point you would do it. So you've decoded it, you've verified the structure of the token, and you've verified that it's been issued by our user pool, and now you can, um, now you can work with the claims. Um, another thing you can do, instead of having this verify endpoint you can set up um, you can set up some middleware so we're using chi for example um, but you could build some custom middleware and you could say something like r.use um, with auth or something like that right um, so you could set certain endpoints um, to use your custom middleware that would kind of do the same thing right it would take the public key um, um, pull out the incoming token from the request and just parse it to verify it. Um, so that would probably be my suggestion. If you're building out more of a comprehensive API, um, do that um, so that um, build a middleware and then use it on those handlers uh, as needed. Yeah, so that is it for our series. Uh, we're at the end here of how to use AWS Cognito and Go. Thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the videos here. Um, check out the previous videos in the series. If you haven't, I'll have links to um, I'll have links to the code we've used for this series. I'll go ahead and upload that to GitHub and post the repo so that you can take a look and play around with the code as well. Um, I'll link to all of the documentation, uh, these two documentation links as well, so that you can take your time and read through those also. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and see you next time.